Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am 13 and uh, I wanted to do some blue things. So I'm going to be sitting here and saying no, 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 no all night. We're going to be very blue. So what is this deck? It is counter all the things. Uh, yes, we are trying to literally counter everything. So on our agenda tonight, uh, this deck is actually piloted after the Mono Blue Tauron Counterspell Commander deck. Uh, it's pretty budget. It's actually kind of fun. So you basically just run out your Commander Tauron, and then you just sit there and counter stuff continuously for the entire game while getting Drakes. Your opponents get to do nothing other than get beat down by Drakes. So we're going to try to transition this into modern with our new toy, Sahili. So Sahili has a very similar effect to Tauron, where... Whenever we counter a spell, we get a 1-1 one, one servo, and then she has the ability to turn the servo into another creature or artifact that you control. So unfortunately, we only have one thing we want to copy, but for the most part, this deck is just going to hopefully keep your opponent off their game until you have enough servos that you're just beating down. So first and foremost, the forerunner of this deck is Cryptic Command. As always, counter target spell, return target permanent, tap all creatures, draw a card. If we fall behind, tap all the creatures. Counter spell, get dorks. Like, we're just going to do some very blue, 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 blue things today. So, on top of that, we have this entire counter suite. So, we get Rune Snag. I didn't even realize that this was modern legal. So, it's counter target spell unless its controller pays two. Essentially, kind of a bad mana leak, but then it's an additional two for every Rune Snag in the graveyard. So, having four copies of this, hopefully, going to get some value across the long term game. We end up running Remand and Narset's Reversal. So, we're going to counter the spell, hopefully, get a Drake or a Servo. Then uh, we end up refueling with Expansion Explosion, basically Blue Red Sphinx's Rev. We also get Expansion to copy a counter spell. And then we're running three copies of Madcap Experiment and Platinum Imperium. You never want to go full Johnny, or Timmy. Never go full Timmy. So we got a little Johnny slash Spike in here. We are running a little bit of a combo. And coming back, Sahili can turn one of the servos into another Platinum Imperium for the turn. So all kinds of fun stuff here. Uh, that is the deck. It's going to be very blue. So I will actually just point out that MTGO had a giant update. Uh, this is not what MTGO looks like. I've already crashed tw twice trying to get this to load. It does seem like when it finally loaded my entire collection, we were good to go. So yeah, we're going to uh, see how that looks. It looks like the standard play looks about the same, but uh, I'm a little worried about technical issues. So Counter spells, blue things, we end up running two spell stairs, two spell pierces, just an entire suite of those remands, and hopefully we'll have something out that actually gets us value while we're doing that. I was even feeling ambitious, and we have our little friend here who is actually off center. So we got counter all the things. We can go ahead and cover that stuff right there. Put them back. And our actual counter spell counter. I'm going to try to stay on top of that, but odds are that's not going to work very well. And uh, yeah, let's go stream mode. Okay, what does this hand do? We have a Logic Knot and a Blasphemous Act. We can do better. All right, this is an awkward Narset's Reversal and a slow Tower Rond, but we have four lands and we get a Scry. Uh, people have said blue is weak and modern, but it's because they try to wait until turn four for Jace. We're waiting for a turn four Tower Rand, so... I imagine all kinds of horribleness there. We also have our one of Watery Grave on our sideboard. We use this for uh, Unmoored Ego so that we can name something like a Tron piece that we just cannot beat with just generic counter spells. Running that out first because it actually sends a very, very confusing thing, at least compared to our normal game plan. Oh boy. Narset's Reversal versus Tr Storm. This should be all kinds of fun. Snow-Covered Island here makes me think that they are Storm because they typically have one of these so that they can tutor it with Gifts Ungiven. Um, it's kind of likely that I actually want to just run out Ambush Viper here, so I'm going to Field of Ruin. We don't have much that cares about multiple red sources, so... Oh, that was a mistake. I should have just shocked in the steam vent so I could Narset's Reversal if it's not Storm. Alright, well, let's go ahead and Snappy. If this is Storm, I need to get some beats in. Then uh, I'm going to be using Field of Rune here to get a blue source, so we can run out the Snow-Covered Mountain. And we have represented some very, very strange cards.
opponent having both snow covered island and island is making me basically confirm that they're on storm though all right we got the field of ruin we got to go get a blue source All right, looks for like opponents going for a turn four Gifts Ungiven. Uh, this means that we can Rune Snag with Narset's Reversal, or we can just Cryptic Command, depending on how things go. Jeez, what do I even want to get with Gifts Ungiven in my deck? So I can get a Sahili a rune snag, another Narset's reversal. Like I could do a fair gifts ungiven. Yeah, that seems fine. Opponent doesn't seem like they have a whole lot going on, so I'm okay to bounce this back to their hand. <laughs> We're doing the things. Us uh, target opponent chooses them. I think I want to target my opponent. Search your library for four cards with. Target opponent chooses two cards. Um, huh. All right, this one's for science. I'm going to see if I can do... Okay. So apparently you have to target an opponent, otherwise it's not a legal target and the spell gets countered. Well, lesson learned. I tried. Nobody can't say I didn't try. All right, logic knot means that I can still rune snag with field of ruin, although they didn't play non basic, so yeah, I probably should have thought through that a little bit harder. I was just so excited. All right, so blue, blue one, logic knot unless you pay one. Still have a Brune Snag. And I'd like to get this Tauron down pretty soon. In all honesty, I probably should have Rune Snagged first. Alright, opponent's going for it. I got greedy with the Narset's Reversal. I just really wanted to try. So opponent has three mana. They have two cantrips that they can cast. They're likely getting a win condition. Yep, there it is. So I'm going to put Grape Shot into the graveyard as well as Manamorphose just because it draws cards. Make them actually use the Pass in Flames to get those. Plenty of mana to get around Rune Snag. I got so greedy. All right, well, at least this is kind of a small grape shot. They do have five cards in hand. It's likely it doesn't end well. see if they can cast that they should be able to cast that so I'm just gonna rune snag this make them pay for it so that they have to grape shot here they're still gonna kill me but I got greedy yep all right so 100% my fault so dispel comes in narset comes in blood moon doesn't do anything Blasphemous Act definitely comes out. Counterflux comes in. Unmoored Ego is probably not doing anything. Uh, opponent shouldn't be able to interact with me, so Madcap's definitely sticking around. I can probably trim on Sahili if I'm bringing Narset in. Uh, 
uh, remand gets pretty actively bad here. I think I'd rather have a Sahili than a remand. There could potentially be an argument for one of these board clears for Empty the Warrens. Hmm. I really don't think that's the name of my game, though. I think it's either Platinum Empyrean or still their Storm. I mean, in an ideal world, I'd just Narset's Reversal the Grape Shot and then kill them on the stack, but I, I really wanted to see the gifts I'm given. Alright, love to play first. I can't even play the Logic Knot here, but I can counter the turn 2 Dork. Yeah, I can't keep that. Oh boy, but it's a little bit better than that. Let's cry to a land? Okay, that works. Hmm, I don't think Narset's Reversal actually works on Storm because I'm not actually casting it. Oh well. I guess that means that Mort Ego is supposed to come in this game. I already lost track of my counters. I think this is number four. I'm just going to go with number four. Somebody in YouTube's like, yeah, you're not going to do that. And that's probably 100% correct. But Narset should fix a lot of problems. Oh, I was supposed to tap, tick her down. Pieces of the puzzle, perfectly okay. Uh, gifts Ungiven, Pieces of the Puzzle, a lot of these cards are just going to say put into hand. So they're going to get around Narset. Alright. So opponent's going to know about one rune snag. But it's counter unless they pay four, so... Uh, I don't want Narset to tick down any further. I want them to do a little bit of work if they're going to Grape Shot her. It's not just a single Grape Shot. Or I guess two if they want to get around two counter spells. Steam Vents. Alright, so I think I'm just going for Madcap here. All the randomness. Alright, they had the remand. Well, they're going to have to kill me next turn, which is completely possible. It's probably a little greedy going for this without counter magic backup, but we missed so many land drops there. <laughs> Found a repeal. All right. I believe they've... Oh, I think they've been the Manamorphos. I should probably be keeping better track of what opponent has in hand. So, big empty the Warrens. They've got to leave Remand up, otherwise I'm just going to jam Madcap and they won't be able to win. Alright, so there's a Grape Shot. Did they seriously have both Grape Shots? Wow. Good running, Storm Opponent. I mean, to be fair, I really was laissez-faire about this one, but good runnings. 
All right, currently 0-2 versus Storm. We have roughly two, four counter spells at the moment. Kind of had to guess there. Uh, where did record go? There it is. Oh, yeah. I'm a little fried. It's been a long week. I'm already like past 40 hours for work. Uh, well, it looks like we got our next match. Hopefully going to counter some stuff. Yay, lots of top frog. Give me counter spells. I want to say no to things. All right, we have no blue source in our counter spell deck, so that gets to go away. This is a little bit better, but still a little awkward, so let's hang on to that. We need to have a good number of counter spells in our hand for us to actually be able to accomplish our game plan. And it's looking like it might be Ponza. Could also potentially be Jund. On the off chance it's Ponza, I'm going to lead on the fetch land. All right, looking a little bit more like Jund. Could still be Hollow One or. Okay, Copper Line Gorge, it's Dredge. Yep. And hit two Creeping Chills, fantastic. Uh, would have been so nice to copy the Cathartic Reunion and just draw three cards. All right, let's grab our Steam Vents, tapped. Spell Pierce is all right, so we're looking at Blood Gas coming back right now and a prized amalgam at end step, assuming that they have a land drop. Dredges the Narc Amoeba, which means at least the amalgam's coming back. There's Landfall getting two Blood Gas now. Well, this matchup is the exact reason we have Anger of the Gods in the sideboard, as well as many ways to tutor for it. Yeah, we can spell pierce that. Is there any benefit to copying it? We might get into a Blasphemous Act. Yeah, we'll just spell pierce it. It's more important that they can't discard more dredgers. Alright, so Awkward Jace, I can have Snap, Spell, Pierce, or I can run out to Healy and try to gain some life. They don't have a way to dredge, so I'm currently only looking at 8 damage on the table. Snap blocking really doesn't do a whole lot. I don't have a one mana CMC spell for Sahili. Ah yeah, this is just bad. Should probably move to game 2 before showing them more of our deck, but... Why not? We'll see if they want to send 5 damage at Sahili. Alright, there's Life from the Loam. They got a Dredger back online, as well as Lands for a Future Conflagrate. Ignoring Sahili. Alright. Uh, not hitting a land drop is rough there, so I can... Uh, they're just going to attack. It's fine. I don't need to show them more of my deck. All right, so post-board, the idea was really just counter everything, but Blood Moon is actually kind of effective if we get there. Anger of the Gods is the reason why we have this. Uh, we can end up trimming on things like Remand, actually probably Narset's Reversal. We will never be able to counter a... Actually, we can counter Conflagrate. It's uh, Expansion Explosion that won't be able to counter it. Logic not as awkward. If I was actually trying to do something constructive with this deck, it'd be Relic or Grafdigger's Cage. Uh, Taurond probably doesn't make the cut. Hopefully, opponent's bringing in a lot of sideboard hate. Like Destruction, uh, Abrupt Decays, Assassin's Trophies, Nature's Claims, Rave Revelation. Uh, spell snare is actually relevant against them. 
they will be able to kill Platinum Empyrean, so I might actually just be trimming this package out and try to win a slower way. Narset doesn't work versus Dredge. Uh, Unmourned Ego might be all right. I can name something that's annoying, like Conflagrate or Creeping Chill. All right, we can take the play here. We have lands and remands and... Ooh, remanding Cathartic Reunion. <sighs> All right, so... Yep, I have to get my Watery Grave. It's not very easy to get a black source. Black source it is. Anger of the Gods. All right, so that means I have to represent a blue source here. Sorry, a red source here. Come on, do it. Cathartic reunion. Do it. Life from the Loam. All right, so they're just trying to get a Dredger in the bin. That's a pretty easy reman target if I've ever seen one. Cryptic's not bad. Opponent is definitely on the slower start. So I can just remand, I can copy something that they cast, or I can Field of Ruin and Spell Snare. All right, I think I'm on Field of Ruin and Spell Snare here. Gonna go ahead and get my one red... S oh, that was a mistake. Oh, well. It's not like it matters a ton. Ooh, Sahili actually is live here. It'll let me get my engine started. So red, blue, colorless. This is Ma Sahili. She does things. Oh, that was also strip mine. Okay, so that's worth noting. Okay, pretty sure we just took this one. They are discarding to hand size. So the dredging is about to start happening. They could also try to just natural draw so they can cast the life from the loam to get stomping ground back. I also have another strip mine active and just so, so many answers. Yep, they took a natural draw. Pretty please? Cathartic? Yes! And these are the moments I live for. So, first and foremost, this time I'm actually going to get a blue source because I need it. Then, Narset's reversal. I'm going to return that to your hand get a 1-1, one, one, and then draw three cards. <laughs> oh, that just made me so happy. It's been a long day, and that just felt fantastic. <laughs> uh, well, day. <laughs> I'm sorry, that made me a little too happy. All right, so... Well, that, that already, we did the thing. Oh, I need to update. Okay, I should probably just remove counter all the things because I'm not updating it. But I think about now we're around eight. We are currently 1-1 one, one versus Dredge. Oh, opponent's going to be able to reversal before we can, or to Cathartic Reunion before my reversal's live. Spell Snare? Nope. All right, so hopefully opponent doesn't explode too hard. I mean, we did just punish them very, very hard, so they're probably trying to make their two-drop count here.
I'm not going to be too mean. If they do do something, I'll let it resolve before I crack. All right, loam isn't that bad. Loam means I can steal the next thing to come down. So we are technically a blue-red deck, and we have Anger of the Dro Gods to draw into, so I'm taking my red source as much as I need the black for Unmoored Ego. It's not really super important for our strategy at the moment. That's a Blood Moon. So I get a counter something and then just put them on mountains. I like the strategy. All right, I'm getting ready to move that counter up. Uh, hopefully they actually do commit some mana here because they do bring in a lot of enchantment hate. Uh, we haven't represented anything yet, but it's possible that they just end up floating a green when Blood Moon comes down. Uh, yeah, it's probably worth countering. All right, let's bump it up to nine. No green source? No green source? Oh, that's potentially a green source. All right, so I can jam Blood Moon. Uh, I think I'm holding up Narset's Reversal. They're going to be able to dredge five here, but that's it's kind of conditional on how good that is, and I have Cryptic to buy sometime next turn. Huh, they took a Shock for the Steam Vents? That's, that's a thing. There's a kind of awkward Faithless looting. Hardcast Prize Amalgam, huh? Okay. And they're definitely leaving the mana up to interact. Well, another Cryptic basically means that we have a lot of time before anything matters. Unfortunately, as more time goes on, this Blood Moon gets significantly worse. Like, so much worse. Alright, so they did dredge into a Conflagrate. Yeah, I'm taking beats for now. Oh, that's not going to do much for him. Faithful saluting. Yep, I think the time has come to counter bounce. They've shown that they can cast the prized amalgam, but whatever. They're not going to have it for this turn. Then I have Blood Moon and Narset's reversal. Unfortunately, with nothing else on the table, I'm still going to have to target Blood Moon if they have it. Okay, that's fine. One conflagrate down and putting an opponent off of mana. And here we go. Oh, I countered with cryptic. We are up to ten. Yep, you get your triggers. I can't do much about that. Was a faithful saluting. How much do I need to stem the bleeding here? If I copy that, I'll not do anything productive, so that's fine. Start getting your graveyard out, opponent. I'm pretty close to snap cryptic, so. Those creeping chills are quite bad, though. All the big stuff coming out. So if I take the beats for four, then that means that the last creeping chill is live. Oh, they slept two creeping chills? Yeah, that's not great. All 
All right, snappy boy, go do chump blocks. Hindsight probably should have countered the faithless looting. They actually did get a lot of value off of that. I'd love a Sahili at this point. Actually, that might be too slow. I think I just need the anger. Anger would still leave them with the new blood gas, though. All right. Cryptic tap, drawn to anger. That's where I'm at. Spell snare's not quite that. And can't do anything about the creeping chills. Yeah, it's not fun you can't counter creeping chill. So we do move to zero two. For those of you that missed it, we used uh, Narset's Reversal to get their Cathartic Reunion. So we got to draw three cards and they just discarded three. It was, it was pretty fantastic. That was kind of backbreaking for opponent there. And uh, game one to Storm, I got a little aggressive with the um, Madcap Experiment. They just remanded it and then untapped and had double grape shot. Felt pretty bad. But looks like we got a couple of new subscribers. So our idea here is we want to have Tauron or Sahili and just counter every spell that comes out. Right? Welcome back, Seraphix. Uh, then we just end up running a fun suite of counter spells. Basically just tempo ones that try to delay the game, get us some servos. Uh, then we end up having Explosion as our Blue Red Sphinx's Rev and Madcap Experiment. Just that we're not full... Uh, Never go full Timmy. So here we have <laughs> awkward hand, but we're on the draw with a spell snare, so it's probably fine. So I don't know if you play much Commander Seraphix, but one of my buddies has a Tower on deck that is just all counter spells, and that's what actually influenced this deck tonight. You literally just sit there and seriously dredge again? Is it the same guy? I don't know how to tell. Uh, I, I'm going to need to get used to this new layout. All right, well, basically he just has Tauron, and then he has multiple ways to draw cards in EDH, and so he just counters everything everybody else is doing and just gets a ton of drakes. Kind of annoying, but... Uh, I can't find things. This new UI... No, but, uh, so it was between Anger of the Gods, which I put in the sideboard, or Blasphemous Act. And I ended up choosing Blasphemous Act because A, it's more meme and B, because I'm going to generate a lot of servo tokens, and opponents going to have to commit to the board to get around those servo tokens, ideally. And so, it just made the most amount of sense. Like, I'd hit everything for 13 when I'm mainly running counter spells. I need hard removal as opposed to just three damage to something. All right, so this is take beats to blood gas, hopefully steal a cathartic reunion. Hey, if I have an opportunity to meme, I'm going to take it. And that should not be surprising. I have a reputation to uphold to do absolutely horrible things. Not horrible as in, like, I'm a terrible person. Although, don't get it confused, I am a terrible person. But horrible as in, like, they make absolutely no sense and do nothing productive. Do we get to do it again? Cathartic me. Do it. Do it. Ah. <laughs> All right, so I get to copy the cathartic reunion, return it to their hand, and then I'm going to draw the three cards. I'm so happy. It worked. 
All right, so they are on the old version that runs the gemstone mine. Uh, I definitely need to tick up the counter over that one. That's twice that's happened now. And uh, I really don't want to take the shock. If I'm doing something here, it's probably going to be Snapcast. No, I want Snapcaster to Narset's Reversal again. So this is just going to be a Field of Ruin. And then discard Expansion Explosions. I have to discard the hand size. <laughs> it was so epic, but it didn't really accomplish anything. Are they gonna dredge the Dark Blast? Dredges three can kill my Snapcaster. Yep, they did. They also found a Blood Gas, so they need to have a land. There's the land for the blood ghast. I do want to keep my life total high so it doesn't end up like last game where I end up just getting taken out by creeping chills when I'm pretty much in the commanding state. Honestly, if you Dark Blast me, that's good for you, but... Hmm. Okay. They must plan on getting some Amalgams back? Or are they just trying to do it at instep because they think I'm going to board clear? Faith is looting. You know you want to. Ah. <laughs> All right, well, opponent sequencing has left me a little confused, but I I'm getting full value out of my counter spells. So let's go ahead and take that up to 12. Then what's my best draw? Okay, yeah, this sequencing is also a little loose. Okay, that's a pretty good draw pre-board. Do you have an opponent? Oh, I get to see my entire deck. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. <laughs> we might be 0-2, but I'm having so much fun. <laughs> This did just shut off Blasphemous Act for what it's worth. This poor opponent. So it's uh that was my turn four. On turn three, I stole his cathartic reunion, and on turn four I put out a platinum Empyrean. Yeah, that one actually might hurt a little bit. I don't think it was a low blow, but it definitely was not a fair shot. The ultimate counter. The deck counter. Yep, I go to 15, because I was at 15. And funny enough, opponent's going to mill out first. Oh, don't cathartic reunion when I can't Narset's reversal it. I think opponent's got to be figuring out what's going on because I cannot figure out what they're doing. If you let me untap, I have a million counter spells on my deck. Oh, 
All right, they're going for it. Yeah, they'll gain their life regardless. Oh, well. Do one more damage to your opponent, self, opponent, to yourself, opponent. I want to make this a two-turn clock, not a three-turn clock. All right, they're going for it. Well, I they technically probably could have milled me. That's their backup plan. Like that's plan D, but it is a plan. I guess they can just jump block with the Narc Amoeba, but they're going to have to have a Conflagrate with eight cards in hand. And even then, I have a million counter spells. All right, well, here we go. That's a dead narc me, but you got it. The question is, does he attack with the blood gas again? That's not really the question. I'm just running out of talking points. Like, opponent's pretty dead. Like, really freaking dead. I mean, even milling me gets value because you'll see more cards in my deck. You just see a couple of random counter spells and the Madcap package, which has to come out versus the deck meant to destroy sideboard hate. I mean, yeah, if your plan is to mill out, I'll let you do it faster. Yeah, I really don't know what's going on. Typically, from the dredge side of the table, you always want to take game one and figure out how to get around hate games two or three. So losing game one is just like a huge loss for them. But I didn't even put graveyard hate in my sideboard. I kind of just wanted to counter some spells. So playing dredge twice is a little awkward. I mean, I guess for fun, if opponent gets really close to milling themselves out, I can just blast my sack the table and be like, you could have killed me. But that's kind of unsportsmanlike. Yep, keep uh, doing your triggers, opponent. So I am finding out that they have at least two basic mountains. May as well hit the black source. Alright, well, um, sure. Let's play bumper cars with another Narc Amoeba. Does look like only two basics. The way opponent's been sequencing makes me think that they're not trying to do a high level play of like leaving something to tutor. So there's the Conflagrate. They can cast Life from the Loam, get up to seven, but again, I, I have a lot of pretty blue cards.
Not exactly engaging magic, but hopefully opponent realizes that they're dead on table and their deck doesn't have a suite of cards that can get around that. Falling eight minutes behind on clock should kind of be a hint that it might be time to go to game two. It was so nice, like taking their cathartic reunion though and then madcap into a free win. Her deck's doing her deck things. We're countering everything. <laughs> Even though it's all triggers. I mean, I guess technically opponents should still have three creeping chills left in their deck. They're probably thinking they might be able to piece that together with a cathart with a conflagrate, but like the life loss still won't change our life. The conflagrate has to kill the platinum Empyrean. I guess they do technically represent having twelve damage on the table. So if they think they get there, they get there, but yeah, you gain three life. I'm still at 15. Sure. I think I'm winning this by you milling out at this point, so go for it. There's another Narc Amoeba, but I'm probably not playing bumper cars while they have 8 power on the table. They did find another prized amalgam as well. Discarding a Creeping Chill. Alright, closing 9 minutes ahead on clock. Also not keeping cards in hand for Conflagrate, like that is your one out. But I have counter spells and I can't even use them. Like at what point do I just start countering my own stuff to get my counter up? Yep, you got it. And another counter spell. All right, a uh, very fun filled turn seven for me. Draw pass. Opponent did take a natural draw. They're kind of figuring out what they've got to do to piece this together. Uh, they do have one life from the loam somewhere, assuming that they're running all four. There it is. So Conflagrate right now would be for seven. But it's just going to eat a remand. All the cards go to the graveyard. Come on, you know you want to. Oh. Land? Hey, it's a field of ruin. Well, the only difference from my turn seven was playing a field of ruin. I feel like I'm accomplishing things. Opponent takes another natural draw, so they are currently at eight, but I, I have many, many spells. There are a number like them, but these are mine. This is going to be a tasty conflagrate. It's CMC is 17 on the stack. But uh, let's return that back to your hand, or more appropriately with flashback costs, to the exile zone with zero cards in hand. And we get to move on. So, Anger of the Gods comes in. Counter Flux is probably going to come in. 
I am definitely 100% boarding this out. They're expecting both sideboard hate and know about the Platinum Empyrean, so there's no reason to stick around with it. Narset does not get around Dredge unless they've already drawn a card for turn, which opponent didn't do that until they had five cards left in their deck. Uh, there's no reason to hang on to Dispel. Counterflux is just a hard counter. Unmoored Ego can take a problem card like Creeping Chill. I don't know. I think I was at this point last time and I ended up bringing in the Unmoored Egos, but I'm not sure if that's correct. Three mans can get flashbacks. I probably should have trimmed those last time, but... Yeah, let's bring in the Unmoored Egos. Not being able to counter the Creeping Chills hard enough, so... We can run as is. Just a lot of counter spells. This is absolutely nothing. That's awkward. That is no lands. Opponent keeps their six. This is a steam vents with a spell snare on the draw, hopefully into a rune snag and a logic knot. Scry into a land, please and thank you. Not an unmoored ego. All right, this might be a quick game too. Which is probably good for opponent as they're 10 minutes behind on clock. Steve ends with a shock. Hopefully this snags a cathartic reunion. All right. Well, missing land drops, but still have two counter spells up. Taking the shock means that this is a three drop. And it's a stinky boy. All right, well, that is a slow clock. <laughs> and this is such a terrible draw. Oh boy, so we have six, 10, 14, 17, 23 lands. I probably should have been more disciplined in multi four, but. When you have a land to scry and a draw to try to find one and a spell snare for the turn two play, it's just so hard to try to talk yourself out of that. Hopefully opponent's just hold holding a bunch of sideboard hate. I mean, what do you even do with that? Uh, Snapcaster, Spell Snare, Snapcaster, Spell Pierce is probably going to be live before Jace, but Jace is a better win condition. I have Snapcaster, Tron. Okay, so there's no point to counter this because they're doing it to get Life from the Loam into the Graveyard. They're going to make their land drop and then hopefully drop a Cathartic Reunion to start dredging it. And this clock literally means nothing, so... And they don't even make their land drop for the turn. This is turn four for them. All right. <laughs> Dag, be cool! We're countering things! We want to have fun tonight! We took game one versus Dredge. This should be a pretty easy one. I should probably update my record. We are currently one up versus Dredge. Well, at this rate, beats for two is probably going to lose to timer in game three. Uh, opponent has a land in hand. So... Uh, it's still not worth it. I'm expecting the important spell to be coming next. But I guess while I'm waiting, I can sort this by CMC. <laughs> because <laughs> these are never going to get cast. Be cool, deck. Be cool. Right, yeah, opponent isn't making their land drops, which makes me think that they are on Conflagrate again. Oh, glory, hallelujah. The Steam Vents increases the clock by a full turn. 
they have a dredge engine. I have a hard counter for something big and nasty. So here we go. Well, that turn six was a land drop, but it was my second one. So we're leaps and bounds above, like not doing anything on turn seven last game. Oddly enough, discarding to hand size is field logic knot. Longer opponent milks us, the worse they're going to be off for the timer. I don't want to win that way, but like, they have just been moving so slow. I also don't know what happened with my quick passes. Keyboard hasn't been working as regularly today. Might be the new update. Come on, man, you've dredged like three lands. I have faith in you. All right, well, if he's holding Dark Blast, he gets me, but I want to get some kind of a board state. And that's how I do it, especially when their deck is mostly sorcery speed. So if they dredge into a... Seriously, deck? Why? If they dredge into a creeping chill or they just conflagrate me from hand for one, I'm going to be hasty blood gas. So I'm going to keep Snapcaster back. Uh, given the fact that it's turn eight and I have two lands, I assume I'm going to lose this one. And I'm kind of just playing a clock at this point. It's not really interesting content to watch, but when this is how your opponent's playing, it's life. If I flash in Snapcaster here, I have to put on a five turn clock. Yeah, I'm going to lose by one. That's fine. <laughs> oh boy. How did I wrong you, deck? Just how did I do it? Uh, I'm not tapping out for Jay's Cryptic to tap down is best meeting my game plan right now. So that's going to be the four drop I keep around. Well, these are hasty blood gas coming in. And I know opponent has enough land drops for the end of time. So I'm blocking just a block here. Opponent can conflagrate for zero and then shoot me for seven. So I need to leave up counter magic. So with three prized amalgams, huh, okay, well, I'm taking my highest chance of getting a land drop here. Field of Ruin, you're a wee bit late, <laughs> and Watery Grave is not what you want to see. So I am dead 20 million different ways, so, I mean, may as well. You got it, opponent. Just attack. My turn nine third land drop was a very threatening game. All right, so what does this change? I think that that... If they're going to play a slow interactive game, I still just have the hate pieces for it. I think we're just good to go. We just need to have a better luck than hitting absolutely no lands. This is, this is lands. So we're on the play. Snapcaster's probably just playing an Ambush Viper slash Reduce Blasphemous Act by one. So Healy's going to be gain life or start putting out chump blockers for time or to reduce the cost of Blasphemous Act. I mean, I'm game. It's nothing amazing. It's no Narset's Reversal and Cathartic Reunion, but I actually have a curve in land drops. 
Treecorn does lead to their busted starts. Most of the time they board that out game two and three just because they need to bring in interactive pieces. All right, well, see what you can pull off with uh, active Shriekhorn and two mana opponent. Oh, it's a cathartic reunion. I want my Narset's reversal. He didn't learn anything game one. But it's fine. I'll do this. All right, so luckily the blood gas isn't coming back this turn for the prized amalgam. Oh. Deck, I, how did I wrong you so badly that you did not want to treat me well versus Dredge? All right, well, this is going to be a Sahili. Hopefully a land means next turn is a, is a Jace. Get a Servo, bounce the prized amalgam. If, mo if opponent misses their land drop here, though, then we are, like, super far ahead. Oh, I've got to move up the counter. I didn't have any spells last game, so I didn't have to tick it up. All right, there's the blood gas. So land for Jace. Somebody takes two. Uh, that means Jace would be taking two. Alternatively, it's Snapcaster with Spell Snare up, and that's probably not relevant. I always Jace plus. If I Jace plus, uh, Jace can still die. So that doesn't make much sense. It's also sad, but I would like to nurse that reversal that life from the loam at some point. Talrond, you're too slow, buddy. You needed to be a land. All right, let's see where opponent sends the love and if they make the mistake of running out a two drop before combat. Not leaving up the fetch land to get blood gas back instant speed feels a little loose, but they could always possibly have another draw. They are also looking like they're dredging the life from the loam again. They did, which means they can just pick it back up. So I guess that makes sense, but your life total typically doesn't matter. And again, your clock usually doesn't either, especially in MTGO, you usually hit all of your triggers. All right, them all going to Sahili means that I leave everything up. Then hopefully this is a cathartic reunion. I'd also accept the life from the loam. Nope. Okay, so Blasphemous Act minus four would cost five. Eh, yeah, I'm not really ready for that either. Uh, another Narset's Reversal. So slowly dying to seven damage, and by slowly I mean three turns. So this is for sure an in-step Snapcaster, because I am running out of time. Come on, opponent Loam, I'd love some lands. Uh, I guess that'll have to do. All right, up to 14. Oh boy, there's like no love here. Guess that means Tauron's going away. It's like the whole reason we built the deck today. <laughs> All right, well, I guess it's good to be lucky. So I can Jace, I'll have to attack Jace. Alternatively, I can just slam Anger and then snap Anger. In fact, I'm below 10, means that any new blood gas are hasty, but opponent's running out of time. Just gonna slam Anger. Make them actually figure out how to commit back to the board. Single land here means Snapcaster, Anger's live. Like a single Narc Amoeba doesn't do anything. Well, thank you for your faithful saluting opponent. 
It was not card disadvantage for me. Lovely. That is 100% a way to die. There's still three more in the deck. All right, so stem the bleeding as much as possible. That's gonna be Jace with a bounce. It means that I won't be dead to two creeping chills. Well, there's a blood ghast. So Jace is dead if they want him dead. They're running a little low on clock. It's hard to feel bad for them though when they're 13 minutes behind and I'm actually just scrapping my lines. All right, that's a life from the loam to turn back on blood ghast. There's blood gas trigger, but he's the only thing coming back. I've got to target Jace. Yep. Random faithless looting. Oh boy. That's why you want to do stuff pre-combat. Main two is the... Like when you're an aggressive deck with this out, you need to go for it. So I need an untapped land for Snapcaster into Anger of the Gods. Hmm. What does this actually mean? So I have a Narset's Reversal... I can Sahili if they just need to make a land drop and I'm dead though. Yeah, so right now it's Sahili. Hold up Narset's Reversal if they try to cast something pre combat. If they don't bring back the other Blood Gas, I can snap in with Snappy. This is fun, Fair Magic, right? Yeah. Yep, and can't do anything about that. So lose to Dredge. It would help if we had actual real hate in our sideboard for that matchup. But what can you do? So currently 0-3 overall. Have lost to Storm and two Dredge matchups. Uh, those are basically the matchups on paper that I would say we'd lose anyway, just running a handful of counter spells. So, like, as much fun as it sounds like on paper to slam a tower on and hold up counter magic, like, you'd need Disrupting Shield to do anything the turn he comes down, which means you need to make continuous land drops. So 23 lands might be a little light for that plan. Uh, so Healy felt like getting 1-1 servos would be pretty interesting, but, again, you have to tap out on turn 3, and our storm opponent killed us on turn 3 when we tapped out 4. So that is definitely a risk in modern. Uh, a lot of our counters are kind of conditional. Like, I was holding those Narsad's reversals, which did absolute work versus Cathartic Reunion, but they didn't really... Like, they're not impactful the rest of the time I was holding them. Blasphemous Act might be a little too cute, but I figured we'd have a ton of servos on the ground by the time it comes around. Uh, yeah, I'm good to keep this. It has a Snapcaster for long game, Cryptic for long game. We have a Rune Snag for the first counter. Sahili, so we can actually enact our game plan. Would have loved an additional land over the Blasphemous Act, but still a fine six card hand. All right, so Windswept Heath typically means fair matchup. I'm getting the read that I'm either going to be looking down a Devoted Druid combo or a Thalia. So I'm passing with Rune Snag up. I mean, it's not like I had much else to do, but both of those cards I don't want to hit the table, so it just seems appropriate that we'd leave Rune Snag up. This other Cryptic's a little awkward. I really think I'd be seeing more lands. Like, that second game versus Dredge there was just abysmal. Got to turn nine before seeing our third land. Oh, that is a slippery boy himself. Yeah, that's not resolving. 
uh, our life total might matter long term, so... Yeah, I don't want the Bogle to hit the field. If they have a second one, that's going to feel bad. But if they kept a hand stacked with enchantments, then they kept a hand stacked with enchantments. Oh, Field of Ruin is what I wanted to see. So I need to hit one more land drop for these Cryptics. And Cryptic is, funny enough, probably one of our best interactions for the enchantments. They go for a uh, Celestial Mantle and just bounce the other enchantment. Oh, they have a Spirit Dancer. And a Rancor. Alright, so I need a land! Uh, the funny thing is, I've actually talked one of my friends into buying it. <laughs> oh, that is a delicious polluted delta. So, the trample is kind of nasty. I don't really want to allow them to untap with the spirit dancer. But I'd also love to be able to hold up counter magic. So, I think what I'm going to do is let them tap out and invest into it pre-combat and then I'll bounce it and then I'll be able to counter it on the way back down and hopefully they just won't draw into a secondary creature off of whatever enchantments they put on this because like if they just go to mantle this I'm going to bounce the spirit dancer and I'm basically winning Alright, so this is where I bounce draw. We're gonna bounce a spirit dancer. I need the double red for expansion explosion. So let's go ahead and bounce draw. I get my little servo to get things started. Opponent get, didn't get to draw a ton of cards, but hopefully if they don't have the land, I'll be able to just counter it the next time it comes down. I think that was my best bet. It's always so hard. It depends on what they have in hand. It's so hard to correctly play around that. This hitting the graveyard means that they get to return it. Yeah, you got to let that resolve opponent. All right, they did find a Glade Cover Scout. Another counter spell is pretty good, though. Oh, I'm not really, really on top of my knowledge here. I believe they run a f two forests and a plains. So Field of Ruins probably not live yet. If I can keep the totem armors off or bounce the totem armor in step, then I can just Blasphemous Act and clear the board. Seraphix, you are telling me Blasphemous Act wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> All right, so there's the first strike. Actually, I won't have Cryptic if I Logic Knot it. Ethereal Armor. All right, so that is one that I care about, just because that makes it massive. So let's go ahead and counter unless you pay two. I get another servo friend. They do have Rancor, which is worth keeping track of, but right now Rancor is only going to make it a 4-2, which means the Healy won't die, which is why I chose the sequencing. And if it absolutely comes to it, I can just flash in Snapcaster. All right. Life gain's not going to get you very far in this matchup. I'm just going to keep all of your creatures answered. Coming after me. Uh, huh. It's only two damage. Yeah, that's hitting me. Servos are reducing the cost of the Blasphemous Axe, so that seems like a pretty easy exchange. We will 
just grab another shock because we can. So I have Snapcaster Cryptic lined up. I have regular Cryptic. Yeah, so still staying on defense. Eventually I'm going to bounce this Hyena Umbra and hopefully kill their Spirit Dancer and the Bogle. Fourth mana means that they can chain everything currently in hand. Oh, that's awkward. Now I can't actually bounce the Hyena Umbra. Whatever, let's just counter draw. No, I have to counter tap. Oh my gosh, this is so awkward. I don't know what's in hand at this point. They have four random cards. So if I counter and tap, it means that I can untap and Blasphemous Act. But our deck's finally doing what it's supposed to be doing. Like, I wouldn't call Bogles a fair deck, but it's at least doing fair enough things that... Oh, good point. I didn't know about the Rancor. He can also attach to Griff's Spoon whenever he feels like it. All right, Polluted Delta is not horrible. He now has Trample, which means that the Snapcaster actually is going to have to... Actually, can I Blasphemous Act and get rid of the Totem Armor? So that's going to be Snapcaster, one mana. I'll have five creatures on the table. Nope, so a little bit off from that. So I think for the time being, why not? Get in, Servos. You're tapping down again. Now, oddly enough, I actually feel like I'm kind of ahead on this board. All right, I think I have to let this go. Because Blasphemous Act is getting to the point it's castable. Okay, uh, this is exactly what I've been waiting for. Get an island, we get two snap. Take the cryptic command. We're gonna cryptic. We're gonna tap all creatures and return target permanent. We're gonna, oh. All right, let's hope he just doesn't draw into a land. If he draws into a land, this is for not, because he'll just replay it. No land? Yes! All right, then we get to do some big boy beats. Oh, and that's just a fantastic draw. I'm sorry, my dudes. But uh, it's time to get some work done. Yes, Servo comes in to die. You get your Rancor back. Really? That all the Core Spirit Dancers? I mean, I guess I found all my Cryptic, so it's hard to get mad at that, but... I, I gave up on my counter. Like, there's just been too many. Yay! We had no cards in hand, but we still won that. All right, so... Oh, he's done. Yay! That's actually my golden knight, was to get somebody to just completely give up. All right, well, for those of you new to the stream, I am king of the 2-3 bracket. I take absolute garbage into a friendly league and walk away 2-3. So hopefully we're going to pull that off again tonight. We just had Bogle's Rage quit against us. Oh, that felt good. All right, what do we have here? We have 
Okay, these are actually all the pieces to a successful Oops All Counters deck. Uh, this is going to be... We're on the draw, which makes it slightly more awkward. Uh, I mean, I guess if it was everything that we wanted, we'd have a Spell Snare. But, oh boy. Things just got a little bit more awkward. Alright, so they should have an answer to Madcap mainboard. That's our redeeming piece. And this is a lovely thought not here to ruin our day. Oh, no it's not. I still have some hopes and dreams left. I will gladly take my beats for two that don't require you ripping Madcap from my hand. Uh, on the other hand, though, this deck usually runs Chalice, which starts turning off our counter spells pretty hard. Well, it's keeping damage off of us. Eh, more permanent answer's fine. So, odds of seeing a non-creature spell out of them is just going to be a chalice on a number I don't actually care about. So, this is just going to be a tap land. I'm going to run out the watery graves that they think we're doing something a little bit more convoluted than just bought basically mono blue counter spells. They will see part of our deck off the madcap experiment, but thanks to this rune snag, they shouldn't get too much progress out of it. Sure. I mean, may as well. Worst case scenario is they have another one drop, and I guess they could technically have a swamp and a thought seize. That might have been a reason not to do that since it didn't matter, but. All right, well, opponent, can you do something about the big platinum Empyrean? Hey, we only revealed four cards. Pretty good. And one was another Madcap. Do they have double dismember? Wow. All right, so that was a thing. I mean, if you're gonna make Bogle's snap quit, like you probably need to have some downsides and I suppose dying to double dismember is about as good of a downside as you can get. <laughs> I mean, Would playing correctly have just been leave up one mana and keep the spell pierce around? <sighs> I mean, I may as well play it out. It's not like I'm crazy dead. But Madcap's in the yard. I need to find a way to get Madcap into the deck. Alright, well I go to two against the deck that just showed me a Reality Smasher. My Madcap is out, which means that I'm going to be on hard counter here, and... <laughs> oh my god, that means that I have to run out Snap as a Ambush Viper, and Rune Snag as a hard counter. Alright, well, uh... I suppose there have been harder battles. Uh, so, Seraphix, Madcap is... Not sure how much of that you can see. Reveal from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact card and put it into the battlefield. And our Platinum Empyrean is right underneath it in the graveyard, so that won't work. If this had a replacement effect similar to the... 
There's three dismembers in the Mono Carlos deck. <laughs> yeah, I only have one Empyrean. Actually, I probably should have Narset's reversal that targeting the Mimic. Oh well. This is a moment for loose plays. It's not like they're going to have a ton of stuff in here. I guess at one point in time, they might actually um, always dust me and redirect me. No, I think that's each player. Each player? Yeah, that won't do anything. Mm. Not happy about this, but I have to counter it. Because if I don't counter this, this can just kill me next turn. So will the Eldrazi Smasher, but I can draw into just about anything other than removal. So I need to keep the table clear. All right. Well, honorable way out it is. So Eldrazi, I'm assuming Tron, Blood Moon's coming in. Um, counter spells get significantly worse with the Cavern of Souls. So the Blood Moon's kind of a need to have. Ceremonious Rejection was made for this matchup. Um, does Eldrazi actually have an answer to Madcap other than two dismembers? I'm going to have to look that one up. Uh, let's actually just do this. I guess they could technically blast zone long game. Uh, they're going to be on Karn. <laughs> Ratchet Bomb, technically. So, Dismember, potentially Ensnaring Bridge. Yeah, I think we're fine. Uh, I think Warping Well is only toughness, power or toughness one. Uh, so this is Eldrazi Tron, just the straight colorless version of the deck. They didn't show me any reason to believe that they were the colored version. So I think I'm going to be on Unmoored Ego just to take Karn because I've been getting really frustrated with that matchup with fun decks. So we saw a Gemstone and we saw Eldrazi Temples. Oh, yeah, I, I don't care about that. Um, Blasphemous Act is in. Anger isn't going to cut it. Anger is the reason Blasphemous Act was main board. I need to make seven cuts at this point. They're not going to have instants or sorceries. Uh, Tower Rond is probably just a little too slow. Just tram and expansion. Nah, both expansion explosions. If we win this, we're probably going to win through a cheese or just by grindy. Yeah, maybe one. Then probably just a number of spell pierces. Actually, spell pierce on the draw seems fine because it can snag a chalice. Although, I don't care about chalice. Yeah, that seems fine. Took a little long to figure out what they'd be on. Um, let's see. This is a spell snare into a remand into hopefully an Udmort Ego with multiple counter spells. So... Yeah, I could actually see them on the Simeon Spirit Guide version, but the difference here is essentially just the All is Dust and Expedition map. Yeah, I guess that they're not actually on the Tron lands. They were on the Serum Powder because they had the um, Exiler dude. And they put us on the play. Ah, the new icon is messing with me. Uh, I don't think they're actually supposed to put us on the play with this deck. Like, you're supposed to have the turn one chalice. Pretty much any way you look at it. Oh well. 
I need to play my deck, and my deck is a weird pile of jank, so might get all kinds of crazy up in here. I'd love to draw my third land. I don't know why this has been a pattern with 23 lands. All right, so I'm going to reman this. I'd like to hit my land drop, and I kind of don't care long term if rune snags in the yard. Rune snag is still going to be active next turn as long as it's not just a mimic. But if it is, I have spell snare with rune snag. And there's the cavern. So I'd love to find blood moon at some point, which means I need to find a basic. All right, reality smasher. All right, I think I'm taking beats for five here and I'm just gonna field of ruin the cavern. It's too important to my game plan. So, yeah, nothing I particularly care about in there. Thank you for the link though, Serfix. Doing all the, you're doing good work. Making it so I can be lazy. All right, so island. Um, so how many did opponent have? They ended up having three dismembers. So I will survive just about anything next turn, and then I can madcap while holding up. Uh, I won't have the mana for it. All right, so I think the game plan right now is hold up counter magic as long as they don't have it, and then madcap when I'm getting a little more threatened. Yeah, but the fact that we saw three dismembers game one was absolutely infuriating considering I'm not a creature deck. Uh, so I can snap remand that. Yeah, seems fun. I could unmoored ego, but according to this list, they're not actually on the Karn plan, so I'd probably only be taking like an Endbringer with that. In the meantime, I could draw a card, try to hit my land drops. I mean, opponent's just going to run this back out, so it's not like this is furthering my game plan at all, but it's just tempo so I can try to get land drops to set up for protecting my Platinum Empyrean. Yay, a land! That's a start! Blocking is literally no good here because I'll still take four. Currently on a three-turn clock off the Smashers. All right, Shaper comes down, which means I'm still dead to another... <laughs> so awkward. Uh, I'm still dead to another Reality Smasher, so I've got a Madcap now. If they happen to have some two-mana Artifact Destruction, which they shouldn't have in Colorless, but if they do, I've got the Spell Snare. We revealed 40 cards. They get to see our entire deck. Yep, don't care about that. I feel like I've had some incredible odds tonight, both good and bad, although I've been on the losing side of it every time that I've done it. Uh, I got dredged three times with a Narset's Reversal and a Cathartic Reunion. Like, I cannot tell you how good that feels. All right, Ceremonious Rejection is actually super, super nice here. Sahili gets to come down, start making servos. The servos can become copies of Platinum Imperium and attack. Like, I'm feeling in a pretty good spot. I don't have a hard counter to two dismembers yet, but I have the pieces to start winning the game, which is important. I mean, I guess that's fair. They probably want to start chipping in at Sahili. Okay. 
I mean, I suppose that makes sense. Do I care about anything here? So I can like snap and get rid of a scourge, but they'll just be able to recast it. They clearly have something to toss down on defense. Yeah, it's fine. So Healy can die. I guess it just failed to register that I could technically not have my life total change, but uh, Sahili can still just bite the big one. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I can't pay life here. Nope. All right. Mildly awkward. Means all my fetch lands are turned off. Um, suppose that means Platinum Empyrean gets in. I mean, no point not to. <laughs> if they Urborg, I'd be so happy. I just named this member at that point. <laughs> oh, that that that's not a swamp. All right. Well, no point in attacking now. I can't kill anything on the ground. Thanks to all the serum powders, though, my opponent's going to mill out first. And that's a really good Snapcaster target. <laughs> I need a better wind condition or something like a wonder. Let me actually attack in with Platinum Empyrean. Okay, I go to seven. Well, that's a thing. So, I think I'm just on Brainstorm. I want to find a Swamp. And I can't activate any of those. So, awkward. All right, so Jace is going to eat it this turn. That should open myself up to a attack. Yep, we've officially hit the hard cast serum powder point of the game. Opponent, would you like to ghost quarter me so I can get rid of two fetch lands I can't activate? All right, so if opponent's on a single dismember here, I actually have an active rune snag, so I'm gonna eat one of the replacers. Should also get opponent a card deeper into their deck. But apparently I'm a ways out of casting Unmoored Ego, so that might have been a mistake to bring it in. Although, really, like this interaction, it should, it should let me do things. They drew into the dismember. Oh well. Soft counters for the win. Wait, how did they pay for that? What mana did they still have up? Oh, a Simeon Spirit Guide? Alright, that that was a mistake. But that means that I can Cryptic snap cryptic. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm just on snap hold up interaction and cryptic with the new snap out. Because opponent's not going to have any interaction here, so I want to wait for them to commit into an attack and then just steal it because they had to dismember so much. <laughs> oh, this game has been ridiculous. Tap all creatures, draw a card. 
Oh, I was supposed to bounce Muta Vault there. Alright, so... I'm trying to set up a scenario where opponent thinks that we're completely out of action. Uh, I guess they're going to have Cryptic on their mind now, which means they can lead back two blockers. So I think I have to attack into this Muta Vault now. Or I can snap, bounce, snap, crit uh, I only have one Cryptic. Yeah, that's awkward. Alright, so I'm going to attack into the Muta Vault. I really don't have anything better to be doing here. Yep. That was a punt. I, I'll, I'll even punt myself there, because if I would have actually bounced the Muta Vault, I could have just put in the other Snapcaster Mage and attack for lethal. Now I'm going to have to snap Cryptic and hope to find another Cryptic. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Blood Moon would also be pretty good. I'm assuming I could just tap down all the creatures and make it so that they can't activate their man lands. But this one was 100% mine to lose. So before I draw a card, I'm going to go fetch. Just thin the deck a little bit. Uh, when I'm looking at drawing like three cards over 30, it's becoming 10%. So it is becoming a little bit more statistically relevant. So let's go ahead and tap down the team, draw a card. Jace is pretty decent given the fact that our fetch lands are turned back on. Oh. Bye, Jace. Mm. Okay. Well, may as well take a look for funsy's sake. But that's going to be the ball game. So, Endbringer is probably the thing I care about. They had a ley line. <laughs> All right, so they were just one hundred percent aggro. All right. So, all counter spells. I stopped counting because it was seriously hard to stay on top of. So, the concept was hopefully get out one of these two and then get a lot of additional effects when you cast your counter spells. And that didn't really quite work out. So, Sahili being three mana did make this close to a strategy, but. Taurond, every single time I saw him, was like, there's a Jace in my hand. You're not going to do anything, buddy. Go away. Uh, a lot of these counter spells are situational. We ran into a lot of problems with that. But, I mean, first and foremost, we just ran into issues where counter spells weren't great. So, like, that last match, I wanted to just board out counter spells because they had a cavern, because they don't have instants and sorceries that I could copy, because remand would just let them recast, and their cards were more impactful than mine. I mean, I still had fun. We did go 1-4, which is unfortunate, but... I thoroughly enjoyed playing this deck. I cannot tell you how amazing it felt when I was like, oh yeah, let's uh, Narset's Reversal take your uh, 
cathartic reunion. I'm going to draw three cards. Uh, even my opponent was like, ouch, that was brutal in chat. Like, it was just ridiculous. It was super powerful. But uh, it felt fun to play. Uh, it wasn't competitive. We knew that going in. But, yeah, that's the deck. Uh, I'm 13. I do stuff for Squirrel Dealer. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We have a YouTube channel. I play tons and tons and tons of just absolutely fun, janky decks. Seraphix is pretty... Uh, comes back a lot, the word, fun stuff. Uh, but he knows that I just play a lot of Mimi decks. Like, we have a ton of random stuff in here. We've done everything from, like, Is It Miracles to Zer Prison decks, and we've done everything super Mimi. I love Narset Cannon. We do a lot of fun things around here, so feel free to like, subscribe, all that self-promoting crap. Uh, yeah, second Platinum, Empyrean would be fantastic in the list. I actually did go down to three madcaps because i felt like being able to shuffle the platinum empyrean back into the deck with jace would be pretty powerful but i honestly can't believe how many people removed them like it felt like it was a fun cutesy thing to do but we did play dredge twice we played against storm i honestly don't think we have much of a bet against those decks narset's reversal i felt was going to be a good matchup then i read the card before they even comboed off and realized i wouldn't get the storm trigger so like that's just abysmal like there's no point in countering a cantrip or anything like that. It's too hard to stay on top of. Tron actually felt like the miracle matchup, but we never saw it. But uh, thanks for sticking around, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of your night.